Hi there, thank you so much for joining me today. My name is Natasha, welcome to my channel. This video is another update in my Pan This Eyeshadow series. It's for the month of September. And I have hit pan on four shades total, two from the five that I was working on and two bonus pans. Before I get started, I wanted to thank Alexi for inspiring me to do this series. Both her and Rebecca Morgan are the reason why I got the idea to do this series. I have both of their channels and their videos and playlists linked in the description box. The premise of this series is I randomly choose five eyeshadows and I try to hit pan on all of them and once I hit pan on one shade I randomly bring in a new eyeshadow so I always have five that I'm working on. And I do monthly updates and so far I've done pretty well. I've hit pan on quite a few eyeshadows in my collection. My goal is to hit 20 to 30 percent of all eyeshadows having pan in my collection by the end of the year. I'm going to start by showing you a photo of the five eyeshadows that I was working with last month. And now I'm going to show you the two eyeshadows that I hit pan on in my quintet. The first one is one that I've had for quite a while. I randomly generated it back in June, so I've been working on it for about three months straight. It's from the Tartlet in Bloom palette, and it's the shade Activist. It's a very dark matte brown color, and I use this a lot to deepen up the crease and create more dramatic looks, and I really did enjoy it. Because the pans are relatively deep in the Tartlet in Bloom palette, and because it's a darker shade, so I don't have to use as much in each look, it did take me a long time to use. That brings the pan total in this palette alone to seven, meaning that more than half of the shades in this palette now have pan on them. I did randomly generate two other eyeshadows from this palette earlier this year, both in Rebel and Sweetheart. So I have had this palette in my rotation for quite a while, and as much as I love this palette, I am very glad to put it back and focus on some other palettes in my collection. The next shade I hit pan on is from the Milani Most Loved Mattes palette, and it was in the shade Umber the Sun, which is in the corner here. Umber the Sun is a dark matte brown, and it definitely leans more red than orange, and I really liked this in my looks because it was fun to have more of like a ready orange look versus a yellowy orange look. It had a lot of depth to it, so I could use this to deepen up the crease and the outer third of my eye look as well. I use this a ton on the lower lash line, which is why I think I hit pan on it so quickly. I'm actually wearing it on my lower lash line today, and I think it's a really great shade for that. I do love it, but I am ready to put this back. As for the three shades that I didn't hit pan on, two of them are from the Color Rain Queen of Hearts palette. Let's first talk about Ladyship, which is this matte purple here. I randomly chose this shade to work on at the beginning of July, so I have had it in my rotation for about two months, but I've only reached for it 15 times, so I haven't really shown a huge dent in here. There may be a little bit of a difference, but I really haven't been focusing on the shade. I'm wearing it a little bit in my crease today. It is really nice, and I finally figured out a way to work with it. Before I randomly chose it, I wasn't crazy about the formula. It's a little bit dry. It can be patchy and a little bit hard to blend out and build up the pigment, but I figured out a way to do it. I figured out what brushes work best for that. So I am glad that I randomly chose it because now I know how to work with it, and I like it more than I did before. Before, but I still have a long long ways to go. The pans in this palette are very deep and as much as I love purple eyeshadow I don't wear it every day so this one is definitely going to take a while. And the next shade I randomly chose is in this palette as well. It's right next to Ladyship. It's the shade Duchess. This is a pretty neutral chocolate brown. It's deeper. It's great for deepening up an eye look. Once again I use it in very similar ways that I used Activist from the Tarte and Bloom palette. I randomly chose this at the beginning of August so I've only had it in my rotation for one month. Even so it's one of my least used shades. I was really focusing on Activist and Number the Sun. Since I was focusing on those two browns, I didn't really have room in my eyeshadow looks for a third brown. <laughs> so hopefully I don't choose any more browns in the two that I'll be bringing in this month, and this can be the only one that I focus on. It's a beautiful chocolate brown shade. I definitely can't wait to start dipping my brush in it more, and I imagine this one will also take a long time to hit pan. And the last shade is a single from Cleona, and it's in the shade Prophecy. It's this one right here. It's a duochrome with a pink base and a beautiful yellow gold shift. I am wearing this on my eyelids today, and if you can see, the pink really doesn't show up as much. It definitely just looks more like a gold shadow. It really has to be in certain lights for you to see the pink at all, which I'm fine with. Pink eyeshadows are a little bit hard for me to pull off because they can make me look a little bit sickly. I do love the formula. I love the pigment, and I love the gold reflect, and I think it goes really nicely with the purples and browns that I've been playing with this past month. This one definitely has a bigger dip in it than it did last month, but even so, I imagine this one will take a while. It doesn't take me as long to hit pan on shimmery shades as it does mattes, and as of now, it's the only lid shade that I'm working on, so it's something I can easily use every day. I am glad that I randomly chose Prophecy because it was one of my lesser used singles just because I don't gravitate towards pinks very often, but now that I have it in my rotation, 
I realized how beautiful it is and how easily I can incorporate it into everyday looks. Now let's talk about my two bonus pans. Both of them are from the Anastasia Beverly Hills Sultry palette. I randomly generated two shades from this palette in past months, both teak and ember, and I hit pan on them, but as a result, I was pulling out this palette a lot more, and I used Fresh, which is a matte cream shade, and Pearl, which is a shimmery pinky champagne shade, and even after I hit pan on those two other shades, I still kept using them regularly just to finish up looks. I used Fresh to set my eyeshadow primer, and I used Pearl as a chunky inner corner highlight. I love it for that. I don't love it so much on the lid because it is more chunky. It definitely has a very brightening reflect though, so it works really nicely on the inner corner. And I found that I really, really like chunky inner corner highlights. That's one of my favorite summer looks right now. It is a more crumbly shade though, so it didn't take me a long time to hit pan on it. And using a chunky inner corner shade is a great way for me to get use out of those chunky shimmery shades that I own that I don't love on the lid. So those are two more pans to add. I have four pans in this palette now, which is very exciting. And I have since moved on to other cream shades and other inner corner highlights in my collection. Now let's talk about complementary shades. There are about 11 shades that I used a lot in rotation with the other eyeshadows that I was wearing. I do have a section at the end of all of these videos where I showcase the looks that I created over the month with the shadows that I had. And I'm glad to say that every single look that I feature has at least one of these shades in there so you can see what it looks like on my lid. So the first two complementary shades are obviously the two shades I hit pan on, both Pearl and Fresh from the Anastasia Beverly Hills Sultry palette. Another complimentary shade is this shade here from Cleona. This is the shade Emerald. I created a really, really pretty green and dark gray look with this. That'll be featured at the end of the video as well. In that green look, I also used this single here from ColourPop. It's the shade Team Captain. This is a matte army green, and I used this in the crease in that green look. And I really liked it for that. That's easily one of my favorite single shades that I own. I just love that color. It's so unique to my collection. And the last single I used was Makeup Geek Starry Eyed. Once again, this is featured in that green look. I used it on my inner corner and I think on my lower lash line to add a little bit of brightness. And my last two complimentary shades came from my newest palette in my collection, and that is the Tarte Make Believe in Yourself palette. The first complimentary shade is this one right here, Dream. It is a really pretty aqua blue color. I used this in a blue eyeshadow look. And the second complimentary shade I used was Trance, which is right here. I'm not really sure how to describe it because it is technically a taupe, but it's very light. It has a little bit of a silver reflect, a little bit of purple in there, a little bit of light brown. It's a really pretty color all over the lid, and I incorporated this in a look as well. Like I said, all of these eyeshadows will be shown in action in my favorite looks portion of the video. Now let's look at my pan percentage. At the end of last month, my pan percentage was 20.8%, meaning I had pan in 31 shades out of the 149 shadows that I owned. Since then, I have purchased a new palette from Tarte and a couple singles from Cleona Cosmetics, and I have hit pan on a couple shades as well. So my new percentage is 21.3%. I have 35 pans out of the 164 shadows that I own. I'm really glad to be above the 20% mark at this point of the year. It makes me feel very confident that I might be able to hit 30% by the end of 2019. And now for my favorite part, I get to choose two new shades to bring into my quintet because I hit pan on two shades this month. To help me generate two random shades, I'm going to be using my Pretty Random app. My minimum is one and my maximum is 126. I have 126 different shadows that I haven't hit pan on or randomly generated in past months. So let's randomly generate them together on screen. My first number is 88. This shade is, once again, from the Anastasia Beverly Hills Sultry Palette, and it's in the shade Dystopian, which, surprise, surprise, is a deep chocolate brown. Granted, this is much more cool tone than Duchess, so I can find a way to use either of them depending on the undertones of the eye look that I'm going for, and Anastasia Beverly Hills shadows are a little bit easier to hit pan on than others, just something in the formula that makes them a little bit more powdery. I am more than happy to have another excuse to reach for this palette. I love this palette, and I'm very sad that it's like a limited edition palette. I think this should be a part of their permanent line. I haven't really pulled a lot for this shade specifically, but I don't think it'll be a problem to incorporate it into looks as a deepener shade. It reminds me a lot of Activist. It's a little bit cool tone. It's a dark brown. It's basically like having another Activist in my rotation. <laughs> let's pick one more shade and let's really hope that it's not another brown. Okay, and my shade is 86, so I'm assuming it's going to be from the Sultry palette again. 
Number 86 is the shade Cinder, which is a really pretty bronzy shade right here in the corner. That Cinder shade I don't think will be that hard to hit pan on. I have hit pan on two other similar shades from that palette and they didn't take me that long because they make really great all over the lid one eyeshadow looks, meaning that I use it all over my eye, so I use a lot every time. So this is my Quintet. I know it looks really similar to last month. <laughs> Even though I got rid of two browns, I got another brown and then a bronzy brown. I don't mind that. I'm really, really loving this color story. I have no problem wearing stuff like this again. Having so many browns means that I can pull in other fun colors and create a really colorful look if that's what I'm feeling. I wonder if I should do a month where I take all of the browns out of the list and that way I can't randomly generate another brown. I might consider doing something like that, but I do really like the idea of it being very random. I'm sure it's getting a little bit repetitive for you guys watching, but I I really don't mind this type of color story. I think it's really pretty. I will be traveling for most of September and some of October, and I don't know what eyeshadows I'm gonna bring with me yet. I'm definitely not gonna bring the three eyeshadow palettes. I'm really gonna try to pare it down and travel light. I am filming this video a little bit early, so I do have the rest of August to focus on these shades. And what I'm thinking is I'll focus on it for the rest of the month, and then I'll come back and give you an update in the middle of October, meaning that I'll have almost a month to focus on on these shades. My updates from now on won't be at the beginning of the month. They'll be kind of in the middle towards the end, but I'm still giving a monthly update, which I'm glad I, I don't have to skip a month. In this portion of the video, I'm going to show you a color of each month so you can see how the color stories have changed up until this point. this video with a little slideshow of all the looks that I have created so far this month with the shadows that I had. In the meantime, that's everything I have. Thank you so much for joining me and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!